Okay, wow, no, it's a beautiful day for everyone, no? Dahil this is again another opportunity for us, no? To share a learning, no? For everyone, no? Not only to my students, no? This is for everyone who may be able to find this YouTube channel, no? Useful and helpful to them, no? Now, before, no? I was able to discuss the five basic integration formula and techniques of integration. So this time we have an additional two formulas now which will be applicable to the integration of exponential functions. No? Now actually there's only one formula here that is added which is I6 because I7 is just only a modification of I6. No? So suppose no? For any exponential function, no? Any base A, no? So, your U, then a DU is there. So, the integral of which is equal to A to power U, ln A plus C. Now, if this is true to any exponential function of whatever base, no? So, in I7, this is exclusively applied to a base which is E. E is actually the base of the Napierian or the natural logarithm. Now, if you substitute your E and I6, so the formula will come out as the integral of exponential u dio, which is equal to the exponential u l over l in E. But l in E, we know it is 1. That is why in I7, no? The formula looks simpler because the denominator of L in A is actually set to 1. So, the only expression that will appear in our integral is only the exponential U plus C. By the way, what is A? A is any constant greater than 0, not equal to 1. No? Now, E has approximate value of 2.718 to it. So, that is the base of the Napierian logarithm or natural logarithm. Our u is a differentiable function. The du is x differential. Now, aside from these two formulas, no? so we also have to recall no? the two other formulas, the laws of radicals and the laws of exponent. No? Because they can be useful no? to arrive with an integrable form no? if ever our given does not follow exactly the integration formula. So, we need to modify no? So, meron tayong dalawang laws dito. So, dapat i-recall rin natin yung laws of exponents and the laws and radicals. Okay? So, here we have an example. No? If we are asked to evaluate no, the integral of the given, no? we have the integral of 2 to power 3x dx. No? Actually, you can treat your 2 as a. Then, our u will be the function 3x. No? Now, if that's the case, then we also have to get the du. Now, from the given, obviously, the du will be 3dx. So, you'll be inserting 3 and balance or neutralize with one third. Now, that can be avoided if we have to work with simplification no? before we do the integration. No? Okay, so, how are we going to simplify? We have to consider law of exponent. So, meron tayong law na ganito, no? So, if we have an A, that is raised to a power M times N. This is the same form as 3 times X, no? Now, it is actually the same. When we have A to power M, then it is further raised to power N, no? Now, if we have to rewrite our given following that form, so, the form can be the integral of 2 cubed, and outside, there is an exponent x. Now, we know what is the value of 2 cubed. That's 2 times 2 times another 2. So, it is the same as it. And the exponent will be x. Now, there is an advantage, no? Pag ang function natin ay nagiging x, no? So, we know if it is x, which is our u, then the du is dx. So, if you have to look at our resulting expression here, so we are already provided with a u du form. So, if we do the integration, then it immediately takes the formula which is I6. No? So, following I6, so we have one sign. A to power X, and that is over L in it, 
plus C as our answer. So, <coughs> in order to arrive no, with a more simpler answer, so you may start with the simplification before you do the integration. Okay, so here are some other samples. No? Okay, number two. The base is E. So, if the base is E, our target formula is the I7. So, exponential U following our given. No? So, our U is the cotangent of 1 fifth of X or X over 5. So, let this be as your U. So, we also have to apply the differentiation formula. So, if our U is equal to a cotangent of X over 5, the DU of which, no? So, dapat i-recall rin ang mga differentiation formula. So, the differential of a cotangent U is a negative cosecant squared U. Then, there is a DU. So, the differential of 1 fifth of X is 1 fifth DX. No? So, let us try to rewrite our given. No? If the differential that comes out after we differentiate no? is the same as the given. No? Now, what appears in the given is dx over sine squared. But there is a reciprocal identity. The 1 over sine is equal to cosecant, correct? So, the 1 over sine squared, no? because this belongs to the denominator side, the 1 over sine squared is also good as the cosecant squared. So, I am now rewriting my given in terms of a cosecant squared. No? So, this is exactly the same as that, only we are using a reciprocal function. Okay? So, <coughs> we have to check no? if the du here as after we evaluate, no? so, also exists in our given. No? Now, obviously, there is a lacking constant factor of negative 1 fifth. 1 fifth and the negative here is actually negative 1 fifth. Now, I'm inserting a negative 1 fifth in order that there is an exact du here. So, we also need, no? to have the reciprocal of this be placed before the integral sign in order to neutralize. No? So that the negative 5 and the negative 1 fifth if multiplied, the product of which becomes 1. No? So meaning, we were able to neutralize the expression being inserted. Okay? Now, following the formula, we have the integral of exponential. We call this as our u. So the du, which is this one, no? is there. So, that is exponential u du. And what's the rule? That is equal to the exponential u. The exponential u, exponential of a cotangent of x over 5 plus c. Now, this function will no longer appear because this is part of the du. That is only exponential u du. In our formula, what will appear as the answer is the exponential u plus c. The negative 5 must be part of our answer. This is the neutralizing factor when we are providing the negative 1 fifth to the DU and the given. Now, which is lacking a negative 1 fifth. Okay? Now, here is another situation or another example. We have an example that is composed no, of two terms. No? Now, we have to follow with some rule. No? So, we have to start using the sum rule. So, we have to do the integration, each term, okay, and this is the result. So, we take the integral of 5e to power 2x dx, then minus 2 as a constant factor, then we have the integral of x raised to power 5e dx, okay? Now, in the first term, you might be confused, no? Which of the formula would it be i6 or the i7? Because there is a presence of E here. Pero if you take note again, this is not exactly E as the base. So that means we are not going to use the I7. Because I7 can only be applied if the base is exactly E. On this case, no, our base is 5E. So it is I6 that will govern here. Because I6 no, is applicable to A to any exponential function of any base, no? So, while ang I7 is only intended for a base of E. So, this is 5E, so you can use the I6. So, if this is E, then this is U. So, if this is U, I must go with the DU. So, what's my DU? Okay? It is to the X. So, it is locking with 2, di ba? And we can neutralize with 1 half. Now, here, this is 
the one involving variable. I call this as u. So if this is u, which is x, the du is dx. So it's there. Now, so u du form. So if this is u and this is a dx, so 5e here is an exponent, a constant power where n under a power rule, this is considered to be our n. Okay? So resulting from inserting a constant to here, so, assuming that 2 is there and neutralize with 1 half, that is why there is 1 half before the formula is applied. So, it is A to power U over ln A, correct? Then, minus 2 for the constant, U to power N plus 1, it's added, and that's over N plus 1, which is 5A plus 1, no? So, you can put your 5A plus 1 in the denominator of X, or I can just associate that with the constant coefficient of 2. So this is now our answer. To complete our answer in the indefinite integral, there must always be a term C, which will be added part of your final answer. Okay? So that's number 3. Eh? Okay, let's have the number 4. We have a ratio. Now, we need to simplify because... There is no role in I6 or I7 no, where it involves a ratio. So we must consider loss of exponent. I'm considering the loss of exponent involving ratio. Okay, so like this. If we have E over B and the common power is N, we can have it as E to power N, B to power N. Meaning, if E and B is there, meaning the bases will be different, but powers must be the same in order to use this. But if I'm going to use this or apply this one, the power must be different. They have different power, but bases must be made the same. Bases are also different, so we cannot apply both in the given. Okay? But from number one example, na, we were also able to apply this one, this law of exponent. If we have e to power n, n, it is again raised to power m. We can write it also as e raised to product of n times m. Okay? So let's try to have this be written following the last no? law of exponent. Okay? So we can take it as 4. No? We can take it as 4 cubed raised to x. No? And we can also write the denominator as 2 to the fourth power raised to x. Now, if their powers are the same, no? and I can take also the equivalent value for 4, uh, four cubed, no? and 2 to the fourth power, 4 cubed is equal to 64, 2 to the fourth power is 16, they are all raised to x. Eh? So if they are all raised to x, no? then I can divide my e and b, raised to a common power of n. So that means... 16 can be a divisor of 64. And the result will be raised to power n. Can we divide 16 uh, 64 by 16? Yes, and the result is 4. So 4 will be raised to power x dx. So if the exponent is just x, no? then I can have the du, which is a dx. Because my u, there is x. So my du is a dx. No? So I can make use of the i6. No? And we have 4 raised to x over L in 4 plus C as our answer. Okay, so this is the last example. Nah? And again, this is not integrable. Nah? So at the start, this yeah, ma integrate no? directly. So kailangan natin mag-apply ng ano? Laws of radicals. Because in the denominator, it is expressed in terms of radical form. No? Okay. Index of your radical na ay gagawin natin on sa Fractional power, 1 over the index, no, is the equivalent. So, I can write it as, okay, this way. So, by writing this in terms of fractional power, the exponential of 4x squared will be raised to a power 1 over the index of your radical. And from the law of exponent, which is this one, this one, we can take their product. So, 4x squared times the one third. Or C, we have 4 over 3x squared being your function in the exponential function. Now, this is not integrable when your E is in the denominator side. So, law of exponent, when you have 1 over E to power N, you take the reciprocal, 
but you have to change the power to opposite. No, so rewriting. So we can have it as exponential, negative 4 over 3x squared. There is another factor x and a dx. Now it's good that there is x because your u in the exponential u form, no? our u is quadratic. And if we are going to differentiate the x squared, no? so that becomes 2x. 2 multiplied with 4 becomes 8. So it is minus 8 over 3x dx. So checking on the given, no? this is lacking with negative 8 over 3. Okay, I'm inserting the negative 8 over 3. Neutralizing factor will be inserted. So we have a negative 3 over 8, correct? Okay. Now formula is now applied. Okay. So minus 3 over 8, exponential u, that's a du. So this will be the one which will only appear in our answer. Or in terms of fractional power, I can take the reciprocal changing the power to positive, then I define that there is an exponent of 1 over 3 outside because this fractional power will also lead into a radical form. So the denominator will be the index of our radical. So we have a cube root of exponential 4x squared plus c. Now any of this three now can be used as answer. No? But if you have to go back to radical because the given is expressed in terms of radical form, so Preferably, it is the last form which is to be presented as a final answer. But there's nothing wrong if you stop here, if there is no required form in our instruction. Okay? So that's all for the exponential function no? on how to integrate. No? So thank you for watching. No? So try to subscribe no? so that our channel can... Be able to reach those no, who are actually in need of this. No? So I'm not only doing this for my students. No? So I am thinking to reach for a greater number of students or greater number of people who are in need of this uh, learning. No? So let's keep on sharing. Okay, so subscribing. So invite your friends to subscribe our channel. No? So I hope that we will be gaining more numbers on the subscription of my YouTube channel. Okay, so thank you for watching and being around always. Okay, so bye-bye and good day.